And welcome back to another daily devotion. I am Pastor Roy here at Woodlawn Christian Church in Lake City, Iowa, and this devotion is for Friday, January 26th of 2024. We have made it to chapter 7 in Mark's Gospel. Today, we're going to look at the first half of this section called the Tradition of the Elders. We could call it the Trouble with Traditions. We're only going to look at the first part of it, though. We'll have leave more trouble for Monday. Um, but, so we're going to look at verses 1 to 8 in the uh, 7th chapter of Mark's Gospel. And I apologize, my sinuses are acting up. The weather's been changing. It's getting nicer. It's going from below zero to being both freezing, but my head doesn't like it. Nonetheless, it's never happy. Let's jump into verses 1 to 8. Now when the Pharisees gathered together to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands defiled. That is unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands, observing the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they purify themselves. And there are many other traditions which they observe, the washing of cups and pots and vessels of bronze. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with hands defiled? And he said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites? As it is written, But this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold fast the tradition of men. Okay, with that, uh, the Pharisees were wont for coming up with all kinds of fences around the law. These traditions were designed to keep them from getting anywhere near breaking a law. They were deathly afraid of that. So they came up with all these things. And one of the areas where they added a whole lot of stuff to was this idea of being ritually pure and, and hand washing and all of that. So they had quite, a, quite an elaborate tradition about hand washing and you had to to do it a certain way and all of that and, and oh my gosh you know we don't wash our hands right at all today but of course we're washing our hands to be, get them clean from germs and that's not what they were doing it for at all they weren't washing their hands with any idea about germs it was about ritual and so they're putting an emphasis on the ritual not on what the practical side of it was um and they have left behind we'll talk more about that on monday left behind many of the actual commands of God, they had come up with these ideas that ended up going the opposite direction. You know, you're so afraid of breaking the law, but yet you make it so that you do. And that's where Jesus is getting upset. But here he's upset about this idea of washing hands, which they've come to. And this is be, this, this, this silliness, this unnecessariness of this. We can think about this a little bit, <clears throat> about tradition and how stuck we are in it. Um, there's a story out there of a church that's trying to call a new minister. They want to bring in a young guy or gal. Uh, and so they put out an ad that says, we are a, 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 a vibrant, older congregation of a 150-year-old church. We're looking for someone dynamic to come in and to, to, to revitalize the church and to grow the church and to do everything exactly the way we've done it for the last 50 years. <clears throat> We're stuck in tradition. One of the things we do in church, and I don't know about your church, but here at Woodlawn, um, we sing the doxology after the offering, after we do the collection. We sing the doxology, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Um, and that seems a little strange we, sometimes if we stop and think about that. And that's strange because <laughs> things changed and things got left behind and things didn't kind of follow sequence here. Uh, because in the olden days, in the just in the Catholic and the, the early Protestant church, communion was done every Sunday. And communion came from the back of the church to the front. It proceeded from, you know, they did a procession with the uh, the elders or deacons bringing the, the bread and body, uh, the blood and body, rather, um, forward the bread and the cup. <clears throat> and as they would do that, they would sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Makes sense when you're talking about the blood and the body of Christ, doesn't it? That makes sense. Well, what happened was in the early days, they, did, they didn't pass the collection plate like we do. Now, we, what we do at Woodlawn, we have communion, and we have the sermon, then we have communion, and then we do the offering. <clears throat> but in the olden days, they didn't originally pass around the plate. They had a basket or a bowl or what have you, some kind of vessel at the back of the church, where people would put in their offering as they came in the building. And in order to prevent people, because people then find out about this, 
when was a good time to go over and snatch some cash out of the, the offering bowl was when all of the procession of communion was going on and everybody's standing up and focusing on the whole thing of communion. That's a good time to sneak in, grab some cash and dart. So what they got to doing was they would bring that up during, you know, when they started to do communion, they would bring the bowl up ahead or behind um, and bring it up the plate um, forward to the front of the church so that people couldn't grab the cash and run. It would be up at the front of the church where everybody can see you now. Um, well, a lot of churches through the years stopped doing communion every week. And you started to just have this whole thing of the, the uh, bringing the offering forward. And of course, then it became kind of inconvenient because a lot of people would forget when they came into church to put their money in the bowl or the basket or the plate. And so they started passing the plate uh, and doing the collection and it evolved into passing the plate. And then it, what ended up happening was those churches ended up doing the doxology after the collection, after the offering, rather than doing it as a part of bringing the communion, the elements forward, where well, it would make more sense, wouldn't it? But these are remnants of traditions that get ingrained into our services. And sometimes it's like, well, that, that, why, well, when we really think about it, why is that the way it is? Well, we're not going to change it now, but <clears throat> we could, because there's really no, sense, no reason not to put the doxology during communion. It would make more sense. I'll be honest. I would think it makes more sense. But people that like it, like it where it is. And I know, again, I mentioned, I think, um, and as I've recorded this many, a couple of times, I'm having trouble with my throat. I think I mentioned it. My wife, Gail, loved that, that we were singing the doxology here when we came to, to Woodlawn. Because our old church, when she was growing up, we, we, we were for years members of the church that she was born into and, and grew up in. Um, that church in the olden days, when she was a child, always sang the doxology. But through the years, they had dropped that. And she didn't like that. She wanted the doxology. So she loved it that when we came here, oh my God, this is like being back home. Uh, we're singing the doxology during the offering. Um, why? Yeah, because I just explained it. One of the things here that I, I actually talked about to tra the traditions, I can't talk here, about the traditions here at Woodlawn, um, <clears throat> when I came, the tradition was that the pastor came up, did the words of institution for the communion, um, and then the pastor would sit down in his chair uh, behind the pulpit, and the, the deacons or the servers would come up on the stage and bring him his communion up on the stage. He would not partake of the cup and, and the, the bread and the cup at the communion table. He would be given communion on the stage in his chair. Well, my problem is I have essential tremors. I shake. For me, picking those little cups out of the tray is not a good deal. And that's one of those things that pinching like this, um, any of those kinds of things, it, it, it can trigger, trigger a tremor, if we say. And so I'm going to spill it and make a mess of it. So I had then changed the communion to where I do the words of institution. And then I add a bit at the end where I tear off a piece of the bread. And this is the bread of Christ body of Christ broken for you, and I dunk it into the, the, the juice, and this is the blood of Christ shed for you, the communion, or the table of, the, the Lord's table is set now, please all come and eat. Um, I have to do the whole thing, or I can't just take, or grab pieces out of it, it's all wired in there, hardwired in what, the right sequence, but at any rate, I started doing that, and I jokingly said, you know, when my time is up here, and I'm gone, or I'm dead and gone, um, somebody is going to give the new pastor a hard times. Wait a minute. You're not doing this the way Pastor Roy did it for however many years. Um, you got to do it this way because that's wrong. Not knowing that there was only one reason why I do it the way I do it. And that's because I have physical in a bit, and, you know, disability. I hate that. That's a tough word. But I'm just, it's, it's a thing about me physically. I can't grab those little cups very well. That's just one of the very hardest things for me to do. <clears throat> so, Somebody someday is going to be put off by that. And they'll never know that the reason why it was done the way it is, they'll long have forgotten. Why did Pastor Roy change that? Um, we get rooted into those traditions. The last words of a dying church is we've always done it this way. We have to remember that. Are we doing it? What we're doing, is it, are we doing it because of some tradition, some, some reason because the pastor shook? Or are we doing it because it's biblical? 
If it's something that we're doing because the pastor shook, there's no problem with changing that. Are we doing it because it's laid out in the Bible? Then we need to do it that way. There's no place that tells us that we have to sing the doxology during collection and instead of during the communion. Or do we have to sing it during communion at all? So those things are traditions. They're not, they're not doctrine. And we don't, want to, we don't want to confuse the two. That's the point here. We need to remember that the order of service is not laid out in stone. We can change the order of service. We can change the music. We can change the color of the carpet. We can do all of these things and still glorify God. In fact, maybe some change once in a while helps us to remember why we do the things we do and not just do them for the sake of doing. Have a blessed day. Please, if you enjoy this devotion, uh, like and subscribe. Come on back again. We'd love to have you with us again. Um, and again, if you enjoy this, like and subscribe. Make a kind comment. If you want to make a kind comment, I always enjoy kind comments. I've been a few people have made kind comments lately. Love that. It's very reassuring to me uh, to know that people are listening and appreciate. Feel free to share the video. Have a blessed day. Please be a blessing to someone today. God loves you. See you later. Take care. Bye-bye.